Well, welcome everybody. Believe it or not, we are still in the season of Easter. And as you can see, we still have the butterfly cross right here in the sanctuary through next week. Next week is Pentecost, which is what is called the birthday of the church, because that is when um, the followers of Christ were gathered together, they received the Holy Spirit, and their commissioning, which had already happened, basically came alive. And they began their work to go out into the world and model what they had learned from Jesus. And as they went, they formed a faith movement that eventually separated itself from the Jewish tradition and became its own thing, the Christian church as we now know it today. But it began as a movement of people who were Jewish. And Pentecost is where this, this movement begins. So that's next week. So I encourage you to wear red. Red is the color of Pentecost. So remember your red, whether you're in Zoom or whether you're here in the sanctuary, please come with your spirit to show your spirit because receiving the Holy Spirit is what next week is all about. So I think that's enough about Pentecost because we'll be covering it next week. Are there any other announcements for the life of the church? Um, if so, please go ahead and unmute yourselves and share. I, I should say that we're having council this week, seven o'clock on Wednesday. So in case you've forgotten that, put that back on your calendar and we'll send out a reminder and a link. And there's a plant sale next week. Oh yes, of course, the plant sale. Please come out with your greenery. If you still have something that you've dug up or rooted and, and grown that you want to donate to the plant sale, speak with Linda, Kit, um, Gloria about, is that right, Linda, is that okay? I can't hear you, but it looks like you're saying yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I was also gonna say you can throw in Jeanette on that to talk. Oh, just bring them, just bring them down, leave them under the um, stairs the, yeah. or? Okay, great. Oh, do you not want to be under the oh, you and, um, and the sale will go all morning next Saturday. Rain yeah. or shine, we'll, we'll move inside if we have to, but we're doing it. So please do come and uh, plan to bring something home to your home or your yard or your garden. We remember what a great celebration it was last year to break open from our houses and get out and gather for the very first time since COVID had begun. Um, this is a, like a reunion. Yay. All right. I think that probably covers all of our business. So we're going to invite Alan to play us into the service now. And you are invited to arrive here to center yourself by listening to the music that Alan's providing. Um, close your eyes, put your feet on the floor, open your hands, open your hearts, open your minds and receive what is offered. Thank you, Alan. If you are here in the sanctuary, you'll find the call to worship in your bulletin. If you are in Zoom, you will see it on your screen. I will read the leader part. 
you can all join in on the people part. If you're here in the sanctuary, oh, another couple announcements. We're going to go with the guidance of other churches in the area. You can sing behind your masks in the sanctuary now. It makes a difference. It's important to be able to participate. So you still have to wear your mask, but you can sing out loud. That's all right. We're giving it a whirl. Now, um, that being said, we're going to go to the call to worship. And I would love the people in the sanctuary to read out loud. I want to be able to hear you. So, so not to me. it's a two-page. If you're, if you're looking on the screen, it'll be two pages long. The earth is the Lord's, and everything in it, the world and all who live in it, for Yahweh founded it on the seas and established it on the waters. Who may stand in God's holy place? We come to you striving for clean hands and pure hearts. We come to receive blessing and vindication from God our Savior. Such is the generation who seeks your face, O Lord. Who is this king of glory? Lord, strong and mighty, our home, our refuge, our fortress, our sacred place. This is adapted from Psalm 24, which we will learn later, is one of the Hebrew scriptures that Jesus quotes in the story that we'll read and share this morning. We begin the prayers of the people with those prayers that have already come to our attention. And then we will invite you first in the sanctuary. Alan, you know what? I forgot the microphone. You know the portable microphone? If you want to grab it out of the closet, it's in the... Alan, Alan's like this amazing person who kind of like does all these things besides play the piano and the organ. So let me offer you first those prayer concerns that have come to us. Then we will ask the people in Zoom to go first with their concerns, and then we'll ask the people in the sanctuary to add theirs. And once we've shared our concerns, then we will move to our celebrations and our gratitudes. First, we remind you that we received the very sad, sad news that Judy Schumann who has been a member of our choir, a mentor to our children, a beloved friend and matriarch of this church and this community died last Saturday. She was with her daughter and she lived a feisty, fierce life on her own terms through the end. And we, miss her but we know that her son and her husband had gone ahead of her and that this is one of those promises it doesn't change how we feel here because we still feel the absence of someone we love but it's really important for us as a comfort i mean my daughter's waiting for me right i think she's going to be there to hold the door open for me so imagine who is holding the door open for judy and greeting her it's it's the promise that helps us live the faith that we live we think also of kevin who has joined us this morning and who was waving at us earlier we think of new families parents new infants, children at risk. We think of those such as Marie who are facing heart surgery, those such as Rosie and Richard, Michelle, Nancy, living with cancer. There are others among us also living with cancer. Some of these people are receiving new but very 
um, serious diagnoses. At least one of them has been told to prepare via hospice for her last journey. We pray for children, again, who are at risk or vulnerable. And we hold always Barry and Jan, Richard Augustine, Richard Himmelwright, and so many others in our community who are needing prayers for their body. And we will do the body prayer shortly, but first I want to make sure that if you have prayers to add to the body of Christ, that we hear them. So this morning, we're going to start in the reverse order, and we're going to ask anybody that's in Zoom, if you wish to unmute, Kevin's waving, Sandy's waving, Sandy's unmuted, so Sandy will go first. Kev, you're next, okay? Go ahead, Sandy. Um, I'd like to continue prayers for my friend Pat, who is on a, a health uh, crisis journey. Uh, we don't know all of it yet, but just keep her in your prayers. So for Pat, and for living in the unknown, and for all the challenges that Pat is facing, and for those who are trying to shine a light on what's happening, and care for Pat, and be with her on this journey, no matter where it goes, let us remember that God has walked this path, and we are never alone. God has always been there ahead of us. By the way, we have to add, throw, add Sasha on our always prayers. Never blink. Sasha's always got a challenge for us. Kevin, go ahead. You, you, um, wanted, you have to unmute, though, Kev. You're muted, Kevin. Yep. Kevin, I can see you, but you have to unmute. He's doing one minute. They're trying to unmute. Uh, can you hear me now? Yep, we got gotcha. you. We got gotcha. you. Okay. Um, prayer for Reverend Gail and Chris, for Cheryl and Tom, Sue and Jeanette, and all the members of our church, and for the staff and patients who want prayer here, prayer for them, and prayer for me and for whatever I'm facing and wherever I'm going, and that God will be with me. And we have a, a visitor here um, named Jennifer. She might want to say some prayers, too. Jennifer, if you have anything, we're going to do concerns first, and then we're going to move to celebration. So if you have anything of concern, Jennifer, go ahead and share it. Um, probably to be able to get on my feet and be able to go home to my girls. To be able to go home to your girls. Yeah. That's a powerful prayer, Jennifer. Thank you. We will hold that in prayer. For Jennifer, for the chance to be where she can receive the support and help that is meaningful, and for the chance to resume the experience of being with her family again and to be able to be present to them by first being present to herself in a healthy and a holistic way. Are there other people that wish to add a prayer of concern? Ginger, go for yes. it. Um, just prayers for positive test results. Prayers for positive test results. Yeah. Um, again, we, we have sometimes people that are in our lives who are friends, our loved ones who are going through diagnostics. Sandy's sort of asking for that same, you know, the diagnostics test results to, to confirm that things are well or to answer questions and find the root causes of problems. Um, in both cases, the, the waiting and the unknown is so hard. It's probably one of the hardest things that we ever do is to not know. We, we're curious and we want to know. So for our uncertainty, may God hold us in that place as well. And Jennifer, go for it. Um, just prayers for my daughter just to make the right decision of moving forward and getting a new job. Um, in her field. Um, there are positions open all throughout the Kettering network here and in her field that would get her foot in the door. So I'm hoping she'll take that, um, yep. have that faith that she can do it and to go ahead and apply. So for our children, and we're gonna, we're gonna pray now with sort of the focus on clarity 
um, discernment, the courage to take the steps that lead you to the calling that is your calling. For all of our children who are graduating, uh, it's both a celebration prayer, but also an anxiety prayer. You know, I mean, it's a hard step. It's a hard step to graduate and to move out again into that unknown, into that wilderness of what comes next. And all the safety nets seem to leave you. And every choice seems like it's the only choice you'll ever make. And even if it's not a permanent choice when you're young, it feels like everything. So for the courage to take the step and begin to know it's not everything, but it's the next step. And it can take you someplace powerful. And if you get it wrong, that's how we learn. If we don't try, we don't learn. Is there anyone else in Zoom that we've missed that wants to raise up anything of concern this morning? OK. In the sanctuary, we have a couple people. Go ahead, Ellen. Thank you so much for doing that. Um, Irene and Dawn are both going to share prayers. Here's a prayer Irene. for Judy's family. A prayer for Judy's family. That's Judy Schumann's family that um, Irene's asked us to pray for as well. And Dawn has a prayer. A prayer for Israel and Israel. Palestine. And, and Palestine. Can you explain what? going on there? I, I, I'm not going to begin to address that right now, Don. Okay. I'm sorry, but no, not in the middle of this prayer. That, that, that's a big, big, big question. And so what I'm going to say is, Don asks the question, can we explain what's happening in Palestine and Israel? It's an ancient, ancient um, experience. And it's a question that is bigger than this room. It's a question as big as this room, as big as this world, it's a question that our hearts and minds continue to work on and it is so complicated. And every time you think you know all the perspectives, there's another perspective that you need to hear and consider. And so we hold in prayer, those who have the courage to come to the table to try to find solutions that will be equitable for all the people that live in the middle of the strife and the division and the lack of clarity who don't have home, who live in places that should be peaceful but are violent, where their children aren't safe, they can't follow their dreams, people don't all have equal rights. It describes a lot of places in the world, not just Israel, but we hold Israel and Palestine in our prayers today as we hold Zimbabwe in our prayers, as we hold Honduras in our prayers as we hold places all around this world that have experienced crises that are political, that are climate driven. Thank you. Thank you for raising up the hurt of the world. Alan has a prayer. I just have one that um, I, I have um, some neighbors that um, are having some um, domestic issues and I would just like to pray for them. And uh, just so that they remember that my own personal prayer is Psalm 62. Um, only in God comes my strength and my salvation. And nice. just to re that they remember that that's where it comes from to get through anything. And as wise people say, peace begins. If we want peace in the nation, we must have peace in our community. If we want peace in our community, we must have peace in our family. If we want peace in our family and in our home, we need peace in our hearts. So peace begins inside us and it works its way outward. But we can always work for peace on the outward layers as well. And so we pray for that peace this morning. Any other prayers here in Zoom that have to do with concerns or worries? Please join me in the body prayer and then we'll move to our gratitudes. I ask that you touch a part of your body that needs healing. If you're not praying for yourself, pray for the body of someone else. If you're sitting with someone and you can hold hands or touch that other person because you're in a place where that's acceptable, do it. But know that whether you are placing your palm on your own body or you are holding someone else your touch is shared. Your touch is shared across 
the sanctuary, across the space that Zoom is spanning. And it goes out into places that are not even gathered up this morning. It goes where it's needed because when you touch each other and when you touch your own body, you are touching the body of Christ. And this is our prayer. Creator, Christ, and Comforter, as we are told in Genesis, all of humankind is made in your likeness and in your image. And today we lift up in children, your children in prayer, in concern and in celebration. This morning we place into your keeping the parts of our bodies, which are your bodies, that need healing and hope, comfort and dignity, love and renewal. You gave birth to the whole world. So we ask for your attention and your compassionate presence for the vulnerable places in your creation, places such as Israel and Palestine, Honduras, Zimbabwe, the Chikanga Church in the city of Mutare in the nation of Zimbabwe and all the places where those that we love and know have found roots, have found home, or a place of service and education. And as we remember in 1 Corinthians 12, you have given us many, many gifts. You have poured out your spirit on us, and it is the same spirit that binds us together, so that when one of us cries out, you cry out. And when one of us celebrates, you sing along. You remind us that as we gather as your people, we are gathering as your body. And we are called to understand that when we feel the touch of our hands on a part of our own body, we are touching the whole body of Christ. And we are called to work together, just like the organs of the body, the limbs, the cells, the skin, all the parts that we might name. We are all members living in this one body. And we who are so different and so many are stronger because of the shared diversity that is connected and unified by belonging to you. We belong to your resurrection body. And so today, when one part hurts, know that all the parts hurt and are involved in the healing of the hurt. And that if one part flourishes, every part is involved in the healing and the renewal, the exuberance and the joy of being well. Look around you, look through Zoom, look in the sanctuary and see that these, you and I together, we are the body of Christ. And our prayers are powerful and when we lay our hands on each other, even in this way, we are praying for God to focus where that focus needs to go and respond and hear us. We call out for God's attention and God's presence. We pray for each other's bodies, hearts, and minds for the hurting and the healing, the living and the dying in the resurrected body of Christ. And for this reminder and this renewal, we give thanks. Feel the heat of your hands on your body. And know this is the energy of love that is offered not just to you, but to all those that you hold in mind and heart today. We need rejoicing to uplift us after we pray for our body. We ask that joy will be available to our body and gratitude and laughter and singing and simple happiness. And so this morning, let us be reminded of those things that give us gratitude and celebration by asking each other, what is bringing you that uplift right now? And I want to bear in mind, first of all, our new graduates, those that have already graduated or are about to and are launching themselves into a new life. May they take wing. May they move into the unknown know that they are upheld and loved by more 
more than just their own energy. They are carried by all of us. Please, if you have prayers of joy or hope, you can lift up your hands and open them and share your prayers. Let's start in Zoom again. So if anybody in Zoom has a prayer you want to lift up, I see Jan. Jan will go first, then Kevin. <laughs> um, I do. I, we are so grateful and so excited. Barry yesterday had his first golf lesson in a pair of golfer. Mm -hmm. He did. Golfing. He has, he's golfing. He did. He put practice range. Here he is. In practice oh my range. gosh, raise yep. your hand. <laughs> he, he, he did. He, had, he did. And he, because of the, it stands him up, you know, so, but because of the back of it, he has to learn how to play one handed because he can't turn. So his very first lesson, he was hitting his driver over 100 yards straight. Oh my lord! I think he's in the background, <laughs> kind of showing off. He is, he's showing he's got off. his thumbs Mike, up for the drive. Okay, prayers for the good drive. Again. <laughs> and I have another. I have another prayer of gratitude. My son is coming <laughs> uh, next Wednesday to stay for a week to give me a break, and I'm coming to the valley, and I will be in church next week. I can't wait to see everyone in 3D. Beautiful, <laughs> 3D. I love that. <laughs> And thank you for all your prayers and your support. Of course. Kevin, why don't you unmute and you can go next. There you go. Uh, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the great weather we've been having, for the people who've been kind, caring, and loving, and just a simple word can change a person's day. Um, I'm grateful I made a friend, Jennifer, and some of the other friends I've made here and the staff. And I'm grateful for our church and I'm grateful for God. Do you want to say something, Jennifer? What you're grateful for? Um, I'm grateful for the Lord's salvation and keeping me in his care. And um, my girls having concern and love and compassion for me. Hmm. For Jennifer, praise for the Lord's salvation and for the care and compassion of her daughters. Um, yeah, God loves us through the people around us, right? That's how we experience love. It's very real. Are there any other prayers of gratitude? I see Tom and Cheryl, go for it. Just unmute. Hey. Sorry. No worries. Go for it. Every year, somebody, we all have one of these things where we celebrate the date we were born. And the difference is tomorrow, we're celebrating one of those dates for Cheryl that has a zero on it. So it's oh. extra special. And zero. we have company coming all the way up from Virginia to help celebrate. And uh, uh, you may hear us singing happy <laughs> birthday, in which case, please just. Plug your ears, Alan. I'm sorry, we're not ready. <laughs> but it's a happy, happy birthday after a very long year. Happy birthday, Cheryl. Oops. And for anybody else whose birthday has come in this time, is there anybody else we need to out right now? Probably that people aren't confessing. All right, any other prayers of celebration or gratitude in Zoom? If you if yes, go ahead, please, and unmute. I'm trying to catch everybody, but I don't want to miss anyone. All right, you guys are being quiet out there, so I'm going to turn it over to Zoom. I mean, to Sanctuary. Does anybody here have something you want to say that you're happy about or that you're grateful for? I just want to say, I am so glad we can sing again. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> just we, we, you know, just the fact we're going to sing behind our masks this morning. So that's a big step for us. We're, we're following the practice of other very conservative churches in the valley who have m taken that step. Um, other. Okay. Then let us in the great tradition of Annie Lamott, our help. Thanks. Wow. Guru who, who brings our prayers to the simplicity of one word. We thank God for the things that remind us 
about love, about renewal, about life, that it comes even in the most surprising of places. The spring peepers, the mother bears and the cubs, the big fat groundhogs that the kids at the Jackson Grammar School are very interested in and that we're seeing out on the roads, the foxes, probably the deer that are gonna start nibbling our gardens all too soon. But the, the spring blooms all around us, the pinks and the magentas and the scents, the fragrances that are starting to perfume our world, the green, the bare earth and the warm sun, the sound of the river, the feel of the kiss of light and wind on our skin, the satisfaction of a long drive, meaning a long golf drive. The ability to be together when we can be together. And the joy of singing and music. We give thanks and we say, oh God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now together, we lift up our voices, please unmute, as we pray together the Lord's Prayer. And you can find it in your bulletin if you are not familiar with it. Our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven, heaven. hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. On earth, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this give us day, day, our, day, our, day, our bread. daily bread. Forgive us, forgive us our, our sins. sins, as we forgive, we forgive, we forgive those who sin against us. us. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the kingdom our power, power, and glory, and glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. We turn to the scripture now. And this morning we will be talking about mental, I'm sorry, emotional well-being. And we will take as our scripture a story lifted from John chapter 2, verses 12, I'm sorry, 13 through 22. You'll find it either on the back of the bulletin or on the screen if you wish to read along. The Passover of the Jews was near and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, Take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Judeans then said to him, what son can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple and in three days, I will raise it up. The Judeans then said, this temple has been under construction for 46 years and will raise, you're going to raise it up in three days. But he, Jesus, was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. When he was in Jerusalem during the Passover festival, many believed in his name because they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus on his part would not entrust himself to them because he knew all people and needed no one to testify about anyone for he himself knew what was in everyone. So ends the reading. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. You'll hear a recurring theme when we talk about wellness as it is modeled by Jesus. It has to do with connection and belonging. 
And that connection involves connection to our own entire selves, our whole and our healthy selves. Connection to other people, connection to creation, and connection to God's self. It is through our connection that we experience the power of love and compassion to heal us and to be able to offer it to others. It gives us a sense of purpose. It gives us hope. It is the source of gratitude. It is the source of perspective and resilience. And so what does that have to do with Jesus who makes a whip and raises his hand in the temple or in the marketplace outside the temple's center? Why is this an important story, except that we know it's a public act? When we looked at the artwork that has been done across the centuries about this story, often the artists depicted a very vibrant, action-oriented Jesus. It's one of the most demonstrative scenes that you will see an artist portray with Jesus in motion, often with a very stern or forbidding or even angry facial expression. And also many, many of the artists, especially the ones that painted in a real or sculpted in a realistic way, have people cowering in fear so afraid of what they see. But artists are interpreters. And what I want to say is that if you read the text again, Jesus does not raise his hand to any person in that temple. He raises his voice and he uses the whip to move out the animals. He overturns tables. He scatters coin. He's not gentle, but in no way is he destructive to the people that he is addressing. Instead, consider that this is a deliberate, a very intentional act, and although there is passion in him, his voice is raised, and he has chosen a very vivid act that will impress people, that they're going to talk about, that they will remember, that will become a story in the Bible that in three of the Gospels is actually placed at the end of his ministry in the last week of his life and is considered to be an act that probably got him in trouble for real with the authorities and became one of the grounds for charging him, trying him, and executing him. But in this Gospel, it's placed at the beginning of his ministry. And those who gathered at five o'clock and wrestled with this text, imagine the young Jesus. He's just performed the miracle we talked about last week when his mother asks him to turn water into wine. He's new and he's just coming into the public forum and he chooses this action to announce who he is in relation to his faith. It's very important that we remember that when he speaks, he is quoting different passages of the Hebrew scriptures. One of them is the psalm that we read this morning. He is rooted in his faith. He was raised in his faith. And he draws on the strength of his faith and his conviction that God is present with him. And God cares about what's happening inside that temple and on the outskirts of that temple and out in the streets and in the homes of the most disenfranchised people. And when he overturns those tables and he scatters the coins and he drives out the livestock and the doves, it's a critique of everything that is going wrong in the world around him. The people who are selling animals sell them at these different tiered prices. His own parents had to dig into their pockets and pay everything that was available to them to buy two small birds when he was an infant. And he was dedicated at the temple. 
Even the animals are a class system. If you're wealthy, you can buy a sheep or an ox. But if you're poor, you can buy a bird. The money changers are there to take money from the world and change the coin of foreign places into coin that was acceptable in the temple. But they charged a fee. So people that wanted to make a donation had to pay interest just to change their coin to that which was acceptable by the institution. God didn't say, I'll only take your denarii. I won't take your Roman coins. I won't take those other, other coins. God didn't make that rule. God didn't say, oh, I, hey, the sheep is better than the bird and the ox is best of all. So I really want you all to. Those things come from people and they were institutionalized. And in that institution was embedded bias and injustice. The heart of the faith that Jesus quotes and that Jesus loves and that he preaches and that he lives, which is embodied inside the temple, that heart is one of love. The temple itself is decorated and fashioned to be mimicking the Garden of Eden. The branches of the candles and the candle holders are mimicking the tree of life. That sanctuary, that haven is supposed to be a place where love meets you and renews you and life is born anew in you and in that community. And instead, on the outskirts of that temple, people are being taken advantage of what they can't afford they're giving anyway. And others are making money on it. And they have forgotten that the heart of the Hebrew scripture, like the heart of the faith that we know now, is to love each other and take, take care of each other, not take the last coin out of your pocket so you can walk with some more dignity into that temple. Not so that your burnt sacrifice can be the bigger animal instead of the smaller one. Later artists use this story to critique the institutions of their times. One artist painted the temple with the columns of the Vatican in it. We don't know exactly what the artist meant because I haven't studied that far into it, but I can tell you that it was painted in revolutionary times when the French were overthrowing their kings and the Americans were declaring themselves independent from Britain for injustice. Other institutions had become unjust, just as the temple that Jesus was critiquing embodied sometimes injustice. When the psalm that we talked about and read this morning says, we turn away from false idols and gods, they can be the coin in our pocket or our desire to present ourselves as more than we are or having more than we are. The ways that we hide ourselves and mask ourselves and separate ourselves from each other. Idols and false gods aren't a golden calf from Moses' time. They're the things in your life where you give your money and your time in ways that separate you from what is whole and wellness for you. And Jesus' emotion and his passion, it was used to prompt change. His anger was focused, and it gave him the courage to speak out and be public and ask that we turn our eyes and our hearts to each other, not with greed, but with love. To remember what we've been taught and how we've been raised and what we stand for and who we should be. Passion and anger moved him to this moment, but it was also intentional. And he never raised a hand to a human. He raised his voice and he put his body in the public place and made a statement. And we know that he does it again and again throughout his life until he finally puts his body on the ultimate line for us. And all that time, all he is saying is remember, remember love, remember the one law, love God 
with all your heart and your mind and your strength and love your neighbor as you love yourself. His anger is used to ask people to reconnect. It sweeps away everything that divides people from the heart of the sanctuary. You can't get in unless you pay your fee because the coin got changed or you bought your sacrificial animal. Guess what? Our doors are unlocked 24 seven and our table at communion is open to all people. And it doesn't matter if you use the word God, you can come to our table because God's love is bigger than our words and our names and our categories. And God didn't shut the doors of the temple. God didn't put the money changers out in front of that marketplace. God opened the door. God fashioned the temple because God's temple is built and reminds us of the garden where all is possible and life is offered to us. And we are a temple. And the only ones who can shut the doors of our own temples are our behaviors and our emotions and our mental health and the ways that they sometimes are out of balance and separate us from ourselves. Jesus balances his heart and his mind. And he uses his emotions to refocus and recenter even himself and to become a catalyst towards moving towards each other and towards connection in healthy ways. But he knows who he is, just as we are called to know who we are, to differentiate from others. Not to tip so far over into your journey with other people that you don't remember that you need to stand on your own ground and be rooted as well in your own place of strength so that you can be present to others. One of the painters, a later painter, painted Jesus in a banking area and the names of Wells Fargo and other large banks were written on each of the teller's windows. And men in blue suits with red ties were running from the room wearing the names of the banks when the banks have become institutions that are hurting us. And other artists depicted other institutions that they were critiquing. The story is as fresh as our lives. Who remembers the sit-in on Wall Street, Occupy Wall Street? Do you remember all the students that sat there and camped out? Some ministers call this Occupy Temple, this story. But we can take it as an example of our own well-being and our own emotional health. It's not just about communal health. It's about remembering who you are and that you are worthy of love. You are worthy of receiving love and being loved. And only then can you really offer love to others. Don't let idols and false gods separate you from yourself. Find your way back to yourself. And then you can be present to the people in your life who need you and love you and want to love you back. Connection and love is the holy coin, the only transaction that needs to take place. And remember, when your pockets are empty or your heart feels tapped out, you are connected to a greater wellspring. The love you need isn't limited to what you carry. The energy you need isn't limited to what you have access to. You can say, I'm exhausted. I'm ready to give up. I don't know what to do next. 
and you can be honest about that. And when you reach for connection, this is where love will meet you and will try to restore you and renew you so that you can find that balance that you may not be able to find alone. Love is here with you. And love asks only to be allowed to show up in your life and meet you where you are and help you find your center again. To step out of the marketplace and the noise of the world and into the heart of the sanctuary that is the echo of the first garden and the last garden and the garden that we create together in love. Thanks be to God. This morning we will be singing praise to the Lord the Almighty. First I ask that you too will remember us in your giving. We thank you for the commitment that you make to this church. Even this week, we are helping people in very different ways. We are helping people pay for college classes along with the scholarship fund that this church and other churches in the Valley put together. You never know what we're gonna be called to do. You never know where we are asked to show up. But your giving helps us care for people here in this Valley people in this nation and around the world. We can do it because you are present to us. And so we ask that if you have not, that you will remember your promise of this week in an envelope in your giving to jxncc.org. But know that it is done if you feel that you can give to this place and trust that we will honor your giving and that you, we will be faithful stewards and put it to the work of loving this world. If you don't know that or you don't believe that, don't give. But if you believe that we are present to you and present to others and that through us you are present to others, then it is right that you should help us and we thank you. Alan will play us in for our song. You can find the words in your bulletin or you'll see them on the screen. Feel free to sing as loudly as you want out in Zoom land unmuted. I mean, muted, muted, please. <laughs> and here, sing, sing behind your masks, enjoy singing.
So I notice a little faux pas, and that's my fault. You guys in the sanctuary had all the words, and the folks in Zoom got the same words twice. So I'm sure you enjoyed singing, and if you sang the message twice, that's okay too, because it came home to you, and you got to sing. Uh, but we will work on my editorial care going forward for the slides for the service. We join together now in the benediction. The words will be again up on the screen. You can find them in your um, bulletin and sing along again here in the sanctuary as you sing at home that we may sing together. <laughs> 